Hello everyone, my name is Jim Lewis, I'm the founder of Model Train Technology and welcome back uh, to another new product announcement for 2021. Uh, we've been pretty busy and uh, this product is really uh, exciting for us. Uh, they're all been exciting but this one sort of the culmination of a lot of work over a year. Uh, we started this as a sound controller and I'll tell you a bit more about it in just a second, but uh, we started working on this and realized that we wanted more than one sound on our sound controller. And that meant uh, triggering more than one trigger, and that got us into setting up the precision sensors and then into the signal controller. So we, we kind of got sidetracked, uh, but on the lab bench for, for quite a while was the sound controller. Uh, it has uh, a single MP3 player built into it, uh, but there are a couple of really key features that are different from everything else out there. You know, usually when you buy a sound module, it has one sound on it. It's a clanging bell, it's uh, background farm music or sounds, and that's all you can do with it. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, maybe adjust the volume. Uh, what we wanted to do is record our own sounds and make that so easy that you could record your own sounds and put them onto the sound controller. There are four tracks, I think of them as four sounds, that you can load onto the, signal, uh, the sound controller and turn on and off any one of the four as you like. Uh, what you do is there's a little USB plug in the back and we supply a short cord and you plug that into your Macintosh or your PC and a folder pops up on your desktop. And that's the folder that is th where the songs or, or sounds reside on the sound controller and you just drag and drop the sounds onto that folder. It has four minutes and you can divide up the four minutes any way you like among four tracks. You can have just one sound that plays for four minutes, two sounds that play for two minutes and so forth. So uh, that's pretty cool. So that's one of the great features and we'll talk about more about the triggering as well. Uh, there's a sound control, uh, sorry, volume control here on, this, on the front and all four of the tracks for each of those sounds the volume can be set individually. So while a sound is playing, you can adjust here to, to listen to how loud you want it. And when you like it, you press the button once and it saves that as the default volume for that sound. So the next time it plays, it will be at that volume. Pretty cool. Uh, you, it works off of our uh, five or 12 volt power modules. Just plug it in. Uh, works in conjunction with the, uh, the precision sensors, which just connect up here. Uh, you can trigger it by a push button, toggle switch, or, or the sensors that we described before. Now one of the really interesting things about this, since we have four tracks, uh, how they interact with each other and, and if two triggers go off, which sound plays. So the way it works is all four tracks have, uh, can be play, set to repeat play or continuous play. So a bell sound for a gate crossing you might put on continuous. Perhaps an announcement that you might make would in, could interrupt uh, the bell clanging or some ambient sound. So it's play once or play repeatedly. That's one option. So there are four dip switches. You just turn that on and off. Uh, the other four dip switches uh, are for interrupt. So uh, if you have some background sound going on, uh, I said maybe train station sound, and then an announcement comes in because the train has arrived at the station. The, you set the trigger for that sound to interrupt the background sounds, play the announcement, and when it's finished, the player will go back and play the ambience uh, sound that you were listening to before. It has a built-in speaker with a baffle built inside, so even though it's a pretty small uh, contraption, uh, it, gives a pretty, it's a, it gives a big sound. So that's great, but perhaps you want to have the controller uh, near where your electronics are or switches, uh, but you want the speaker out in the layout, there are two ways to do that. Uh, the first one is, uh, so uh, there's a plug here, and we can uh, provide you with this uh, two terminal, it's a, a mono sound, and you just plug it in, and that turns off the internal speaker, and you run your wires out to your speaker you know, anywhere in the layout. Uh, the other form is uh, this plug, which is a mono plug, I just soldered it to a very simple uh, speaker, and you just plug that in, and again, that would go out in your layout and both of these uh, connection systems are available. So I have a really cool scenario, you know, demonstration is the best way to show how the product works. Uh, and so on my lab uh, workbench here, uh, I've got something set up and I want to show you uh, this scenario. So let's go to it. 
Before we put the demo to work, I wanted to give you a close-up of the sound controller. Uh, here's the baffle for the speakers on top and the select button to save the volume setting. Uh, there is a volume controller here, an LED light, which we use uh, to indicate that the play sound is playing, uh, and feedback when you push the button. Um, I didn't mention in the introduction that all of the sound controllers have a connection for DCC, which means that you can set four switches to each of the four tracks that we talked about earlier. So when you hit that switch on the, your DCC controller, uh, the sound for that will go off and you can set this to any switch setting. So in D the DCC mode, you have a little over 2,000 uh, switch settings and whatever you set the switch for number one. So if you set it for 10, you have 10, 11, 12, 13 as the four uh, circuits. Here's the power input. Here's the uh, audio jack. And there are five connectors. One is ground, and if you want to use a push button, mechanical push button or to toggle out on the layout, you connect ground to the switch, and then the four tracks are one, two, three, four, that way. And uh, it doesn't matter if you sh connect t a wire to the wrong terminal here, it will do no harm, so don't worry about it. Uh, they're not labeled on top. They're, the manual does show a picture of it, and uh, it's really simple, so don't worry about that. On the back is the dip switches, the logo shows you which orientation to have. So the first four switches on the left are for setting to repeat the sound or play once. So play once on, repeat off, and then the second four switches, as I mentioned earlier, are for the interrupt. So you can see that I've set the switches to a variety of combinations, and I'm going to put it out on the layout and uh, show you uh, and connect it up and show you how that works. Okay, I've uh, double stick taped the magnetic mounting bracket uh, for the sound module to my table. And here's the sound module. I connected it up to a ground wire and four signal wires. And the reason I did that is on this little block back here, hope you can see it, I have four push button switches. And so if I push this, any one of these buttons, the sound will play. I will show you that in a minute. It uses the whole mechanism uh, uses the same signaling system as our uh, signal controller. Here's the mounting bracket for that. And so the, uh, what I have here are two HO uh, scale uh, precision sensors. And it looked kind of funny. I didn't want to drill holes through this nice workbench. So I, I put the, the electrical box on its side and double stick tape and uh, I have the sensor mounted sideways. This is actually an HO sensor, uh, and I have N-Track here, just so I could fit all of this in uh, here. And so uh, this, the thing, first thing we're gonna do is just connect the power wire up. Here's our power module, and we're gonna turn it on. And what'll happen is uh, the sensor uh, signal lights blinked, as well as the sound module, so we know we're all set. So here's the scenario. Imagine that this track here is the siding for a railroad station. So uh, when uh, you have a little toggle switch somewhere out in your layout, and when you toggle that switch, ambient train station music sounds. So you can hear that, all right? So that sound is set for continuous play. And I, instead of pushing the button holding it, I just simply shorted, connected the wire. It. If I had a toggle switch, I could turn it on and off, okay? So that's the background sound. Now, when the train comes into the station, I wanted to play a sound that I recorded that is announcing the arrival of this Amtrak train. And uh, so it's gonna come and I'm gonna just stop it in front of the sensor as if the whole train came and stopped. And what you'll see is, it'll play the sound once and then stop. So here we go. We're going to run the trains coming into the station, slowly coming back, trips the trigger. Amtrak now arriving on track one. And so I recorded that voice on my iPhone, transferred it to the, the Mac and downloaded it. And now once it's played that, you can hear the ambient tr train station sounds again. All right. Now the next, uh, uh, thing to happen in this scenario is I'm going to push in a button that's going to be an announcement of the train leaving. And I'm going to just push it once. Oh, do I have it wired 
Amtrak 1043 for Jacksonville, now leaving on track one. All aboard. Okay, so I used the push button. I was pushing the wrong button back here. It played that sound. Now the train's going to leave. You can hear the background noise still. So this is uh, continuous play. Uh, the announcements that I had, both one triggered by the sensor and one by my push button, were interrupt. So they stopped the sound, the ambient sound. Now the train comes along, keeps going, keeps going, comes to the next sensor, and it happens to be a railroad uh, crossing over here, road crossing. So the sensor is going to pick that up. And I have one with, uh, there you go. And so the train is going by, train is going by, train is going by. Finally, the train passes past the sensor. And the sound goes back to the ambient sound. Now, how you, you can also use a sensor for the ambient sound. Let's say that you put a sensor uh, somewhere out in front here. And so when people get close or you get close, uh, uh, the sound starts up. Or it could be another train on another track. Uh, any other sensor wire you can hook up in parallel uh, to that. And so anything that comes near the station starts the ambient sound. And so, uh, again, so let me go back through that scenario. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to back up the train. All right. All right, we're, we're triggered. The ambient sound is playing. And now the train hits the first sensor. Amtrak now arriving on track one. Okay. And I'm going to push the uh, announcement of the train leaving. Amtrak 1043 for Jacksonville, now leaving on track one. All aboard. And now the train leaves. Ambient sound. And the bell. So. That's really cool. I was so excited when we got this all working and, and trying to figure out a scenario. So I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, if you have questions, uh, please contact me at support. Whoop, let's turn that off. Just move it out of the way. Uh, contact me at support at modeltraintechnology.com. Uh, visit our website, which is modeltraintechnology.com. You can type uh, model train man, one word, into Google and that will bring you to a link for our website. Uh, the product is available for sale now, and we will be shipping in volume beginning October 1st. So first come, first serve on the, the order sequence. Uh, but unlike the, with the signal controllers, we got a little bit behind. Uh, we're ahead of schedule, and we'll have all the production and, and ready. And if you bought the uh, crossing signal in a box, uh, you can add the sound controller to it. It comes with four sounds. Already, one of them is a clanging bell, so you can just hook it up um, and just add that in. You just connect it to the same power control, uh, hook up whatever sensors you want to use, and, and away you go. Uh, so that's it. That's the sound controller from Model Train Technology, and uh, there's still more in the pipeline. We still have some more products and interesting things coming, but now we have the sensors, the signal controllers, and all of the different block signals themselves. Uh, the power module and so forth. So I uh, really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to put sounds onto the sound controller. Uh, here I've removed it from the layout and disconnected the uh, signal wires. Here is the end of my USB cord. Uh, the other end goes into a, any kind of standard USB plug and it's oriented one way. You just plug it in and the light will blink and come on. That tells you that it's connected. So uh, it's disconnected from power. So you disconnect it from power and just plug in the USB just like that. And then you can put it aside and uh, I'll show you what happens on the screen. Okay, so this is a uh, section of my Macintosh desktop and I'm gonna plug in the sound controller just as I showed you a moment ago. And a folder called No Name over here is gonna show up. And uh, it actually looks like a drive, but if you double click on that, that is in fact the folder where the four sounds that we played in the demo reside. And so what I'm going to do is take 
uh, this arrival one, and I'm just going to move it to the trash. And so now I have three, and I have the same sounds recorded over here, uh, and I'm just going to take uh, the arrival uh, one, and I'm going to just, uh, I could drag and drop it. Uh, let's, let's just do that. I can just drag and drop, and that will... Uh, show up over here, and it'll take a second to copy it. And so now the file's there. And I'll close this one on my desktop. And so uh, now these files, uh, you know, are the four tracks that you can play. And the last step, as a good practice, you should eject. There's a choice to eject a drive. Same same uh, procedures that you'd use with a thumb drive. So you just eject that. And as soon as that's done, you can disconnect the cord and the four sounds are on the sound controller, and that's all there is to it.